hey everybody and welcome back to another Retrograde Legends devlog. Retrograde Legends is a unique and very approachable orbital mechanics based roguelite that puts you in command of a variety of spacecraft, propulsion systems, weapon systems, and concepts inspired by real world science. Your task is to master the use of physics and all the tools in your arsenal to take control over this sector of the Milky Way as a bridgehead for the Exile Emperor's reconquest of the settled galaxy. It's been a minute since my last video about Orion Drives, which by the way, if you're interested in watching that, check it out here. If this type of game sounds cool to you by the end of the video, please give it a thumbs up and give the channel a follow to help support development and keep up with updates. Today I want to talk about fission reactors, liquid metal coolant, and batteries. This is all part of the game's internal ship management system. It's designed to give players the opportunity to optimize and customize their ships on the fly without overly punishing them for just vibing and having fun. I really want Retrograde to have a lot of depth and a high skill ceiling, but don't want to create mechanics that are overly complex just for the sake of it. So how does it all work? The system is based roughly on how nuclear spacecraft are expected to work in real life. A fission reactor generates a nuclear reaction in its core which superheats a liquid metal coolant. That coolant carries heat out of the reactor and through a big loop, where it's cooled passively through the ship's hull, or actively by passing through a radiator which turns that heat into infrared radiation, lowering the coolant's temperature. As the coolant circulates through the ship, it generates a magnetic field that's strong enough to create a current that charges the ship's main battery. The rate of exchange between coolant temperature and battery charge rate is different on every ship, so if you really want to get deep into optimizing your builds, you'll start to notice subtle differences in behavior between ships. Weapons that require electricity to function, like coil guns or lasers, draw power from the battery into their capacitors, while sensors and radiators pull power from the battery directly. As various ship components like sensors and weapons do their job, they dump heat that they generate into the coolant. If the coolant temperature becomes too high, sensors and weapons will begin to function poorly, and your ship's coolant won't be able to remove heat from the reactor at top efficiency, so it's important to start to pump the brakes if you see your coolant in the red. If you want to focus on orbital mechanics, combat, and flying around, you can mostly just keep your eye on the reactor and coolant heat. If things start to overheat, just stop firing for a bit, or burn your engine to reduce your reactor's temperature. These strategies will usually get you into a good spot, but if you really want to optimize your ship's heat, thrust, charge rate, combat effectiveness, or if you're really overheating and you're in trouble, you can hover over the bottom right panel to access a more detailed control over your ship's internals. Here you can insert and remove control rods from your reactor's core. Control rods are made of a material that moderates the speed of your reactor's nuclear reaction. The more control rods inserted into a reactor, the slower that reactor heats up. It's possible to fully stop a reactor by inserting all of its control rods, but remember that your reactor will lose heat quickly to coolant this way, and this will affect your ability to thrust if you're using a nuclear thermal rocket. In the 011 build of Retrograde Legends, all of the engines available are nuclear thermal rockets. These rockets work by pumping liquid hydrogen directly past the reactor's core, heating the hydrogen up into a plasma, and accelerating it out into space through the engine nozzle, generating thrust. The side effect of a nuclear thermal rocket system like this is that the cryocool propellant passes the reactor core and actually absorbs heat as it exits the ship. Removing all of your control rods is an effective and very spicy way to quickly gain reactor heat either to help thrust out of a tricky situation or to ramp up your coolant temperature to ensure faster battery recharge rate. But overheating a nuclear reactor can end in meltdown and your ship's destruction. Adding radiators to your build is an effective way to control your coolant temperature. They're not necessary with all builds, but if you're running high heat weapons like a coil gun or the pulsed laser, you may be in for a difficult fight without the ability to consistently shunt heat. Once you've found and equipped a radiator to your ship, you can control its output state from the ship management panel. Modifying the radiator's output changes how much heat it absorbs from coolant. Radiators are constantly trying to cool themselves down by converting coolant heat into infrared energy. If you turn down the radiator's pump rate, it'll be able to cool itself off faster, but running radiators at higher power will reduce the temperature in your coolant more effectively. Remember that this will also heat up your reactors much faster, and they become less efficient if they reach their maximum operating temperature. 
Radiators also require power to pump coolant. Turning up or down your radiator's pump rate will increase or decrease its power consumption. If you're running hot and don't have radiators, or your radiators can't keep up, another option is available. Your ship can dump coolant directly into space. This reduces your coolant's overall volume and greatly decreases the coolant temperature over a very short period of time. This is called an open cycle cooling system, and it creates an interesting alternative to radiators in emergency scenarios. But be careful about what's around you when you vent. The ejected coolant carries a lot of heat and it can damage objects in space on impact. You don't want to accidentally melt your missiles or drones. Thanks to feedback from Retrograde's Discord, link is in the description, the coolant's expulsion velocity and thermal damage are both affected by the current coolant pressure and temperature. So your coolant is most effective as an improvised weapon when it's at its hottest. Well that's it. That's a quick look at how reactors, coolant, battery, radiators, and venting work in Retrograde Legends 011. This game is still in pre-alpha, so by the time you're watching this, certain details about these systems are sure to have changed. If you've watched to the end and you think this concept looks cool, please like and subscribe to support the game and keep up with development. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.